Hi guys, my name is Sarah Torrance and this is me and my husband's channel. Um, his name is Justin Torrance and together we, um, we uploaded a video of how God wrote our love story and it got like 7,500 views um, and a couple of subscri subscribers, which is awesome. Um, and I guess like the update is we had our baby. So our baby is four months old. So I am a mom now. And in terms of filming, you know, it's going to be in between either the baby sleeping or the baby's going to be in the video. Um, so, uh, and me and my husband does shifts so he does night shift and i do day shift so it would have been awesome if we could video together which we will there'll be some videos of us together telling our testimony and all that kind of stuff but in terms of just being on the on the flow of creativity and things that are on my heart and his heart i think we're just gonna have to wing it and just film separately and mesh it together on a video or um just kind of get those times when we're on the go with the baby so anyway um with the how god wrote our love story we got so many awesome comments and people saying that it was encouraging and i think a few people actually started following me on instagram and now we have become friends and um they were saying it was really encouraging with their story of singleness and how you know they've been struggling and praying for a spouse and i totally get it me i was there my husband was there and so it's been on my mind and his mind to continue sharing our testimony of just faith um journey and just uploading more stuff on our life so you know this channel is probably going to be a mishmash of like personal testimonies of how god's moved in my life when i was a single and my own journey my husband's life um on his journey he had his own kind of journey and relationship with god where he brought him from one place to another and so you know i think there's power in the testimony and we want to share how we interact in our relationship with god and hopefully encourage you to do the same and maybe you have the same or even better or different kind of relationship and that's super cool because we all have our personal relationship with god um and also since my husband is a carpenter and we just moved into our new house we're probably going to upload some stuff on diys and how we're going to transform our house so that's going to be fun as well so it's going to be a mishmash of faith marriage singleness baby motherhood since my husband is not here i'm going to use this time to maybe share a personal story of how god brought me from australia all the way to atlanta um georgia and essentially you know with my husband so you know hopefully this will be a fun story to tell i guess i'll go backtrack so i am an actress my husband's an actor actor actress um so i mean this is like not even this kind of brought us together but I think the the ins and outs of the story is actually like really cool of how like God brought me to the United States. Um, so obviously I'm, I'm an actor and when you think of um, America, you always think of LA. So you're like, okay, I'm going to move to LA. And for years, I'm talking about maybe like five years, I've been saying to my mom, like, I really feel like the Lord is going to take me to the US. I'm going to be in LA. I'm going to be living in the US. I'm going to be like, I just feel like my personality is more American. I feel like I would do well in America as an actor. Um, and just my, I just felt like I was like very like, ah, out there for, you know, Australians and Australians are a lot more laid back and chilled out and that kind of stuff. So anyway, she was um, always like, no, you're not going to the States. And I think I shared in the last story, she had a dream of my husband who is American and a couple of my friends had given prophetic words over my husband being American so that was like a whole you know another video that we can cover um but basically I had gotten to this was after COVID so I was living in a really nice when I mean nice it was old it was an old apartment but during COVID because of the country so Australia went into lockdown completely shut off from people um this really nice two-bedroom apartment during covid and the covid prices were like 
dropping. So basically I was getting this two bedroom apartment for $450 a week, which is unheard of. Um, it was a block from the beach, from Coogee Beach, and it was old, but I did it up real good. And even the story of that, um, I'm gonna have to share it, but it's gonna be another video. Like again, like I said, there's so many things that I feel like God was in every single step of my story. And it was a post breakup. It was a place of healing and anyway i was living in such a beautiful beachside apartment and really there was nothing wrong with it but for some reason i just felt like this urgency to leave after about a year and a half or about a year of living there um i was supposed to have a housemate but eventually i was like i just feel like i need to live on my own and then somehow because of it was very low rent um, I was able to live there on my own, which I would never have been able to afford if it wasn't COVID kind of lockdown kind of style. So um, that place was a place of healing and I healed a lot. I made a lot of friends. I made a lot of memories. I found who I was and um, really kind of spent a lot of time with the Lord and myself and learning to love myself again and learning what how the Lord saw me. And all of a sudden, I just felt like this like urgency to kind of move. And it wasn't like I wanted to move to the States because, again, the, the world was locked down in my head. So I couldn't move to the States. And I was like, all right, do I need to move to another beach or side apartment? Um, do I need to upgrade? I mean, I need to earn more money to upgrade. And at the time, it was like I was just doing a few days here and there um, of being a physio. Um, so then I was like, do I move states? Is it, am I not doing the right thing? Should I do filmmaking? Cause I wanted to, to be an actor, but you know, productions were closed. I was like, is this the time to go to Bible school? Like, should I go to Bible college and study the Bible also doing filmmaking? So Hillsong College is in Australia in Sydney. So I was saying to my friend, I was like, should I do Bible college? So all throughout that whole week, and I'm telling you, all within like a week or 10 days, I had about six people tell me to move. And that's that was how it was crazy. It was all confirmation from the Lord of wanting to get me to move because I was I felt this urgency to move, but I didn't know where to go. And I was like, OK, do I need to study something else? Should I move to the Gold Coast to work with this guy who's a producer? I was like, maybe I can be on set with him and I don't even have to be in front of the camera. I can just be behind the scene and just like help him out and be a producer or um, producer's assistant or something like that. Um, so anyway, the story was I was the um, Sydney opened up and I felt this urgency to move. I was looking at apartments and I was like, no, don't feel peace about this. And then I, I, I was doing salsa dancing and kind of like dancing and I was dancing with a friend and he's just like purely a, a, like a really good friend. And I remember like, again, he was never into me or anything like that. He was just purely a really good friend. Like I'm not his type. He wasn't into like Asian girls. So I know he wasn't like hitting on me or anything. But he said to me, and it stuck and that kind of like spurred this whole like full on, like wanting to leave to go overseas. But basically he said to me, he's like, Sarah, what are you doing with acting? And I'm like, well, it just seems like it's not happening. You know, this lockdown, he's like, you should be in LA. And I was like, oh. I'm like, I know I want to be in LA, but right now I was like, maybe I should just buy a house and settle down and just like think of other opportunities. Cause it doesn't seem like it's happening. And he's like, He's like, I really think he's not even in the industry. He's like, I really think you have a chance to make it. I really think you should pursue your dreams. Um, he's like, just take some money, just sell all your stuff and go overseas. You shouldn't be here. And I'm like, and right then it kind of like hit my spirit. And I was like, Lord, like that kind of felt like more peace to me than like, you know, going to film school, Bible school or working for this guy or moving to another you know apartment or something so um he said that and i was like wow i'm like you know thanks for you know encouraging me he's like look again he's like i'm not hitting on you i i i really think that you should really consider going overseas and making a shot while you're single and young and you know while you know this is the best time to go like the world's opening up again and i was like wow that's i'll think about it and then again 
still putting it on the shelf because that's how I do it. And I went over to a friend's house and a girlfriend of mine, and I was and she's extremely prophetic, super prayerful friend, and so beautiful, a huge part in my in my journey with God and whatnot. That's really important is surround yourself with really loving friends. And I was on the street with her and I was like, girl, I'm like, pray for me. I'm like, I really feel like I should do filmmaking at, you know, Hills Hillsong. And again, I was like, should I do this? Should I do that? I'm like, I just feel like I need to move. And she's like, no, I really don't feel peace about you doing Hillsong College. Like, she's like, I don't know what. And I was like, well, maybe I'll go to Gold Coast. And she's like, no, I don't feel peace. She's like, she's like, I really think you need to pack up and move. I think you should go overseas. And I'm like, I was like, okay, that's really super weird. Like now you're the second person. And then I had dinner with a producer the next day. Um, and he's a producer, the Gold Coast producer, super cool guy. I was so close to booking a role with him. And it was like, just when I was just about to move to the States, like I was, I think a few runner up anyway. Uh, had dinner with him and he's like hey dude like he's like i really think that you should go overseas so this is like the third person within again a week and i'm like he's like you would do really well in canada or the us and i was like wow i'm like okay this is the third person and then i think it was another friend again another guy who was a producer who i had worked with on a commercial and he also had said like have you considered going overseas and i was like hey you know i'm thinking of moving to bondi beach because there's more creatives there and he's like have you considered like just going overseas and doing something I'm like dude you're like the fourth person this is like super weird that like you're the fourth person that has told me this um so anyway i think all in all i think it ended up being like four people and again I was feeling like this urgency to move and like leave the country or like do something different than just being content in my beachside apartment, two bedroom apartment that was like super cool. I was literally going to the beach every single morning. Like there was no reason for me to want to move. I was so content where I was that it didn't make sense why I wanted to move. Um, it was like I had like itchy feet kind of a thing. Um, so then what happened was I prayed and I was like, Lord, okay, this is really crazy. Like this person said I needed to move. This person said I needed to move. I'm feeling this urgency to move. I'm freaking out. I would love to go to LA, all the States. Um, I just need to kick up the butt basically. So I prayed and I was like, Lord, if this is you, please speak to me. I need confirmation. I mean, I had like four or five people, but you know, the devil can also sell, send signs as well. So, you know, I wasn't going to be like, okay, I'm going to leave my life, pack up and just go on the impulse. Like that does work sometimes for me, but not all the time. I can be very sporadic and spontaneous and, you know, a little bit silly sometimes. So I've tried to learn to slow down, pray, so I was like, Lord, please pray. give me a word. And so I think within that week, there was also this guy who's a prophetic prayerful guy. He's on Facebook. He doesn't know me. So what's great is that he doesn't know any of my story. He he's, he's given me words that were like on point. Like when I was going through a heartbreak, like nobody knew I had just broken up with my boyfriend, um, ex-boyfriend at the time. And he literally said to me, I feel like there's, tears like you're in a cup and it's spilling out and you just broke up with your boyfriend i was like whoa and he's like and the lord wants to heal you and i'm like whoa like so anyway i trusted his word so this word was crazy i was i typed in my name i waited for my for my my go and the word was insane it was um he said to me he's like oh, i feel like the lord wants to take you on an adventure and Jesus is, I see this vision of Jesus on a boat and you're on the pier and he's reaching his hand out and wants to take you on an adventure, but you're like analysis paralysis and he wants to take you on an adventure and you should go. Oh, okay. Lord, I'm ready. I'm going. I'm going to leave. I'm going to sell all my stuff that I don't need, pack it all up, you know, rent out my place for three months because um tourist visas were three months i was like i'll just go for three months my agent also was like hey i really feel like you should go to la for three months and just check it out you know 
Um, and I was like, whoa. So again, that was another, you know, person that was like, you should try it. And I was like, maybe I should. So that actually was that prophetic word was my, it was like the straw on the camel's back, but in a good way of pushing me to move. Um, and why do you need five signs, six signs? But again, I really wanted to to hear from God and it was a big thing for me to just pack up and leave um because I had it real good I had a really good situation and to give that up was a bit silly so anyway I ended up packing my bags and um starting to kind of list stuff online and then um and then the story happens a week later I met my husband um through Instagram. So what happened was I already got the word of moving to the States and I was going to go to LA. And so I saw his name pop up on Instagram and we had been following each other for like four years, like in barely chatted at all ever. Um, there was only one other time we chatted was when I had like a burning hand. Like I literally burnt my hand with chili, like the, the food chili. And he had commented and we had privately messaged like, again three years before and um anyway so we hadn't chatted i saw his name pop up and i was like well that guy hasn't you know haven't seen this guy online for ages i hope he's okay and alive and that's how we reconnected and um i messaged him i think for, from a few like liking each other's videos and photos and stuff it's it um stirred upon a conversation and I think I messaged him or he messaged me and I was like, hey, I'm going to LA. And he's like, I'm thinking of going to LA. I'm like, wow. And he's like, but if LA doesn't happen, you should think of Atlanta. And I was like, well, never thought of Atlanta. never even heard of Atlanta. I think I've heard of Atlanta once before when I auditioned for a show and it was filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. And that was the only time I've ever heard of Atlanta. Um, and he's like, yeah, go on a call and I'll um, chat to you about Atlanta. It's a really good industry. It's like you know, the Hollywood of the South. I'm like, okay, no worries. Like, let's go for it. Um, and that's how our love story kind of started. So I literally made the decision to move to the States and a week later we reconnected and the rest is history in our love story as we had shared. But that's like a full on in-depth, um, I guess, story of how the Lord told me to move from Australia to the States. And my destination was LA and it's still LA for both of us. Um, but right now with a baby, um, his family, our family is all in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's nice to have family around when you have a baby. But if opportunities open, LA would just definitely be where we feel like the Lord is going to take us there. And it will be, again, same. It will be like needing a confirmation from the Lord. Like this is, you need to go now. Um, so anyway, I hope that was encouraging for someone. If they were ever thinking of going overseas, it's like, you know, keep prayerful about moving. I feel like the Lord will always tell you. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe it. Like now that I look back, I'm like, thank you, Jesus, that you gave me so many people around me to push me because, you know, it is scary moving to a country. And at the time I had moved thinking I'll only go for three, three months and then come back to Australia, get my working visa and then come back. But I actually never ended up going back. I ended up moving here um, as a tourist, spending time with my husband. And then we're like, you know what? I don't I don't want to ever leave you. Um, and then we got married and then I stayed here on a green, uh, ended up getting my green card and whatnot. But, um, and then we have a baby and stuff and I'm finally going back to Australia, which is, which is really, really exciting. But I'm coming back now as a married woman with a baby, as a mother. Um, and I ended up subletting my apartment to a few other Christian girls. And then now it's, um, I had to let that go, but you know, that was hard for me. I really enjoyed it. And I really wanted to take my husband back to the place at where it all began, but that's okay. You know, I gotta let go of the past to move on to the future. But anyway, I thought I would share a few tips for people that have thought of moving overseas as well. Maybe, um, the things that I learned and struggled with, um, you know, I, I, this is how like the Lord has brought me and my husband together in terms of I'm like a big picture kind of person. And he's like a really articulate, sees all the tiny details. I mean, he's a carpenter. He looks at the angles. 
he will look, make sure that everything is up to scratch. And from step one to step 100, he will know every single step. Well, I'm like, I want that. So I'm going to get there. And I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I will get there somehow. Thank you, Lord, that I am so naive. It's not good, but it's also great that it doesn't always stop me. Because I, if I had thought of how difficult it was going to be, I probably wouldn't have done it. But I think I was just so energized by like, God, you've got this big vision for me. What is on the other side? I have to go. I have to, I have to go now. And then obviously I met my husband and I was like, I need to leave like right now. I need to meet this guy. I need to, I need to meet him in person. And uh, uh, it was like this, like, I need to be there right now. Um, but you know, if I hadn't been with him, I think I really would have struggled moving country without preparing for it. So, um, yeah, so hopefully um, these tips and tricks will help you with your move. So in terms of moving to the States, how life has been moving from Australia to the States, you would think that it was very similar. It is not, especially like the South. The South is completely different to Australia. I mean, LA, I feel like would be closest to living in Sydney because Sydney, Australia is like very diverse, multicultural, like beachside, health conscious, um, lots of cars, but everyone drives and everyone drives here, but there's a lot of nature, ocean, people walking around in their yoga gear and that kind of stuff. It's like such a different mindset. On the other hand, it's like, you know, super woke, you know, there's very liberal, it's very progressive, liberal, and that's good in some ways, bad in some ways. Um, the South, like Atlanta was a huge, huge shock to my system because it's like the South, it's like Georgia, it's like there's no ocean, there's trees, um, there's, I mean, I literally said to my husband the other day, I'm like, we're like, oh, let's go out. Let's go for a coffee and cake near the lake. And he goes, yeah, that sounds great. Where do you want to go? Because there's no place that exists in Atlanta. And I was like, damn, are you serious? Like, this is ridiculous. While in Sydney, you can pick and choose where you want to go. Most things are like oceanfront cafes and, you know, they're not booked out. Like, it's just there at every single beach. Like, the whole side of Sydney is coastal. Um so moving to Georgia was definitely a huge shock to my system. Um, driving on the opposite side of the road was a huge sh shock to my system. People don't drive at the speed that the freeway is here. Like if it says 65 miles, people are going at like 80 to 90 and everyone's all at different speeds. Um, so that was a huge shock to my system. <laughs> but um, if I could prepare would be, you know, having all my bank details, money, you know, transferred, having my passport, birth certificate, all that kind of stuff. If you're going to move overseas, you want to try to get yourself set up financially first. Um, and another thing is credit. So in the US, everyone does credit. In Australia, there is no credit system. Um, and so that was extremely difficult. Like to try to find a place here, I had to Airbnb for the first two months until we got married. So I Airbnb'd maybe about four or five places. And then um, I went to a kind of a short term lease, like a sublet of when this guy wasn't in his apartment. So I was there for like eight weeks. Thank you, Jesus, again for, uh, you know, providing, but, um, me and my husband tried to get on a lease and he's a contractor. I'm from overseas and nobody would take us because um, they require uh, pay slips. So what I would recommend for someone who wants to move from overseas would be, you know, try to, if you can kind of plan ahead, would be getting a credit, um, a credit credit score somehow transferred so i think if you're with american express you can transfer your australian credit um american express credit to the us and so that might help you um and if you are a contractor or an actor that wants to move from overseas and this is going to again save you 
being able to find a place. I mean, you can live with people, but if you're like moving as a family or on your own and you want your own place, um, another thing would be like getting pay slips. So making your own company and then paying yourself as pay slips. So you have proof of, um, of weekly kind of payment. So, you know, th those were the things that we had to go around um, for him being a contractor um, because he's a carpenter and an actor and a producer. So he kind of like works all these different jobs and there's no like constant stream of income. And so that's probably something. And then obviously I wasn't working. So that was, uh, and also when I was working in Australia, I was also contracting, like doing physical therapy stuff and acting here and there. So it was like never consistent income. So if you are thinking of moving overseas, that would definitely help you having a credit score, um, transferred from your overseas account, having a banking, um, available. So you would need like, you know, cause you don't have a social security, you would have to get, um, you know, your birth certificate slash passport, um, all that kind of stuff will help you just trying to think what else would help a vehicle but again you know you will have to most likely pay out for a vehicle because you won't be able to get a loan so you know saving a couple of grand for for a vehicle would be really super important and health insurance is really important as well if you're from overseas you want to be covered for your health um, so having travel insurance first when you come and then if you are going to move here then paying for health insurance um, will definitely help cover all your medical expenses um, so anyway those are probably the, the most important things that I would go about trying to make sure that if you are moving from overseas getting that swift movement and not struggling to find a place and job and that kind of stuff I mean the best situation would be you come here already having a job in place you won't have to worry about it but even trying to get a leased apartment if you want to live on your own or with your partner and trying to get your name under your name a place under your name you have to get go through all these hoops if you don't have a solid pay slip so anyway I hope this will help you guys um I have baby baby mummy brain and I hope this encourages you if you were thinking of ever moving overseas to the States um, from my story of how, you know, listening to the Lord, the timing super important. You don't know where it's going to take you. In my case, led me to my husband. Thank you, Jesus. And brought me to somewhere I never thought I would go and um, super excited about the opportunities here. But uh yeah i hope all those tips and tricks will help you as well so anyway subscribe if you are interested in more personal stories of how god has been speaking to me and my husband in our different ways um again there are so many things we want to share it's just a matter of filming it when baby is sleeping or just how baby is awake um just so that we can get content out because yeah i just feel like there's so much that i want to share with you guys so anyway love you guys and take care